Hello and welcome again to the Juggernaut Read Instead Lit Fest. I'm going to read you a selection from one of my favorite writers, James Thurber, the American humorist. Mr. Thurber passed away <coughs> excuse me, in 1961 and a very poignant fact about his life was that for the last many years of his life he went increasingly blind, but this calamity could not deter him from his passion for writing, particularly about the foibles of human beings and animals, particularly animals. In fact, there's an entire book about Thurber's dogs, nor did it diminish his sparkling wit and his astounding use of the English language, uh, where he could invert every cliche that you've ever heard into something original and telling. This is a piece from a book of his called, Is Sex Necessary? The word sex in the title does not refer to the act of sex, but to the gender differentiations. And this is a story, or should I say an essay, or rather a rumination, from that book, and it's called, What Should Children Tell Parents? So many children have come to me and said, what shall I tell my parents about sex? My answer is always the same. Tell them the truth. If the subject is approached in a tactful way, it should be no more embarrassing to teach a parent about sex than to teach him about personal pronouns, and it should be less discouraging. I've talked with hundreds of children about the problem of educating their parents along sex lines. So many of, the, of them have told me that they honestly tried to give their elders the benefit of their rich experience in life, but that the parents usually grew flushed and red and would reply, no, 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 nice people don't talk about such things. It is true that a great gap exists between generations. The fact that children are embarrassed to have their parents along when they are attending certain movies or plays is indicative of how hard it is to overcome the old fear of allowing one's elders to learn anything. A child never knows at which point in a play his uninformed old father will start giggling. It is hard for children to break through and really come in touch with their elders. Parents hesitate to discuss things calmly and intelligently with their children for two reasons. First, they have a kind of dread of learning something they don't want to know. And second, they feel that if they must learn anything at all, they would like to be spared the humiliation of learning it from their offspring. Actually, middle age and even senescence is marked by a great curiosity about life. There is a feeling that life is slipping away quickly and that it would be terrible to have the end come before everything in life has been revealed. The beauty of life, always apparent, implies a mystery which is disturbing right up to the bitter end. The spectacle of old men wistfully attending sex lectures as they frequently do suggests that the strong suspicion exists in them that somewhere they will hear the magic word by which human affairs will become clarified. Somewhere they will glimp the ultimate ecstasy. Children who allow their fathers and mothers to whom they owe their very existence to go on wondering about sex are derelicts to duty. One's mother and father are never too old to be told facts. Indeed, it is most unkind to keep them in ignorance and allow them to nourish the doubts and horrors of their imagination. The majority of parents pick up their knowledge of the facts of life from smoking car conversations, bridge club teas and after dinner speakers. They receive it from their vicious adult companions who are only slightly less ignorant than they are and who give them a hopelessly garbled version. They pick it up too from the gutter.
To illustrate this article, the authors have this. Let me read you the inscription underneath this drawing. It is customary to illustrate sexology chapters with a cross-section of the human body. The authors have chosen to substitute in its place a chart of the North Atlantic showing aeroplane routes. The authors realize that this will be of no help to the sex novice, but neither is the cross-section of the human body. It is of the utmost importance in imparting sex knowledge to one's parents that it be done in such a way as not to engender fear or anxiety. The phraseology should be chosen carefully and efforts should be made to explain everything clearly but without the use of words which have a tendency to make old people nervous. The word erotic is such a word. When it is necessary to speak of man's erotic tendencies, it is best to substitute another word. In the first place, an overwhelming majority of parents do not know the exact meaning of the word erotic, and to know an inexact meaning is worse than nothing. Many are apt to confuse it vaguely with exotic. Just what to tell parents is, of course, a vital question not to be answered dogmatically. The simple phases of sex should be imparted in a direct manner. It is best to explain things in a matter-of-fact way rather than resort to such cloudy analogies as birds and flowers. Strange to say, the habits of birds and flowers have done as little to clarify the human scene as almost any other two manifestations in nature. Further, there is always the danger in setting up plant or animal life as an example that one's parents will place a literal interpretation on things. There is a very interesting case of uh, two parents who failed to learn something to their advantage because they happened to be at dinner. It happened this way. Charles of the Graf and his wife had sent their son Junior to spend the summer at a boys' camp. There, in addition to learning how to swim, paddle and make fires, Junior learnt about sex, so that he returned home fine and brown and a credit to the family. Now, at the camp, the authorities had adopted what is known as the pet method for imparting sex knowledge to the boys. Each boy was given charge of a pet of some kind and they were given carte blanche. Junior Optograph got a pair of sunfish, who have very prodigious sexual habits. You can read about them if you like. To augment the actual pet study, the boys were also given lectures by the camp director, who knew in a general way what he was talking about. Thus, when the summer was over, the boys' minds were full of a strange assortment of facts and oddments, some of them rather amusing. Young Junior had hardly been home an hour when he thought he would do his old man a good turn by telling him what he knew about sunfish. The optographs were at table. Pop, he said, you want the lowdown on a sunfish? And Mrs. Optograph hastily interrupted, better wait till after dinner, son, she said. No, parents have always been held back by the superstitious idea that it is wrong to learn anything while eating. What's the matter with right now? asked Julia. I was just going to tell Pop about our pet study course. I know a lot of things. We'll wait till we are through eating, said Mrs. Optograph. Why should I? A mouse is an embryo 20 days. A lopsided apple is that way because it's been fertilized only on one side. Male animals grow bright colored in the mating season, and so it goes. Sunfish, Jenna, Junior, said Mrs. Optograph sharply, not till after dinner. Sunfish can wait. No, they can't, said Junior, warming up to his subject. The father sunfish makes the nest, and then we don't want to hear about it, snapped Junior's mother. Now tell us about your canoe trips. I never went on any canoe trips. Why not? We're always watching the sunfish. The matter was dropped, and the meal continued in silence. 
After dinner, Mr. Optograph, secretly very much interested, hung around in the hope that his son would again open up on the subject of sunfish. The boy never did. He was only a child, and children are easily discouraged. Sometimes it may be advisable to quote to your parents from standard works on the subject of sex. Great care must be taken, though, to avoid abruptness as far as possible. There is some doubt in my mind whether a child ought to approach its mother on a hot afternoon when she is tired and bedraggled and say to her, Ma, under favourable conditions, a husband and wife should remain sexually attracted to each other during the whole period of their sexual potency. There's no way for a child to talk. Some children have told me that Instead of quoting from books, they have tried leaving the books lying around, opened at pertinent pages. Even this failed to work in most cases. The mothers usually just picked up the book, dusted it, closed it, and fitted it neatly in some nearby shelf. They thought it was dusty. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and don't forget to read instead while you stay home and stay safe.